In our Bible story today and passage of Scripture, we're going to meet up with a leper that Jesus heals. And uh, we find out that God's power is all-sufficient, and this man meets Jesus and finds healing in his touch. We'll look together in Luke chapter number 5, we begin reading verse number 12 this morning. Just a few verses, verses 12 through 15, but follow along with me. Jesus is early in his ministry, and uh, God's going to make a big difference in this man's life. Uh, chapter 5 of the book of Luke, verse 12, the Bible says this, It came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Look what the Bible says in verse 12. It came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Today Jesus is going to heal that leper. And the Bible says of the leper that he was a man full of leprosy. Let's talk for just a moment about that. And it will lead us to our very first point, the leper. We're going to consider the leper number one. Uh, the leper was a man, he, the Bible says, full of leprosy. At this moment in time, leprosy was a very, very uh, tragic diagnosis. Uh, if you were diagnosed with leprosy, it was a death sentence. But it was not a death sentence that would uh, come quickly. It was something that lasted a long time. It began as a, a spot on your skin. And before you knew it, it had spread to your whole body. And sections of your body would literally just fall off from the rot and decay of leprosy. Leprosy was a tragic disease. And uh, it reminds me for just a moment to be thankful that uh, the Lord has raised up folks in medicine that can help us with so many of these things. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for God's uh, giving folks wisdom how to deal with that type of thing. Uh, this leper, he had leprosy. And the Bible says that he was a man full of of leprosy. Some things about being a leper uh, that was very tragic and sad. A leper was uh, somebody that would have been diagnosed with this disease and it would eventually take his life. But the worst thing seeming to me about being a leper was when you found out you had leprosy, you had to separate yourself from your people. You couldn't live in the same house with your family. You would actually find yourself in uh, leper colonies because the leprosy was contagious and you couldn't, you could no longer be touched by your family. You could no longer live in the same house. Uh, lepers had a secluded and, uh, and very uh, difficult life. Folks who didn't have their heads screwed on straight would look at leprosy and think that lepers were lepers because they had some type of sin in their life. And that's not true. Uh, but the lepers, they were uh, looked down on. They, they stunk. They uh, were decaying right before their very eyes. They were separated from society. As a matter of fact, a leper, if a leper came uh, into any type of public place, he, by law, had to cry out before he came to, those, to where there were people. He would cry out, unclean, unclean. And, uh, oh, it was a tough thing to be a leper. And we meet a man, the Bible says, that was full of leprosy. Now, I don't believe that people were lepers because of sin, but leper, leprosy is a picture of sin. And you know what sin does? Sin, it begins small and it decays away at the core of a man or a woman or a boy or a girl. And leprosy ultimately costs everything. Sin is something that will destroy you. Sin is something... That'll cause you great grief. Sin is something that'll separate you from your family. Sin is something that will cause you to be an outcast. Ultimately, sin. This was a man full of leprosy. And a man full of leprosy, he was in a spot, he was in a situation that he was desperate. He was in desperate need. And a man in desperation, he finds help in the place where we can find help in our desperate situations. This leper finds healing 
in Jesus. He was a man full of leprosy. He was desperate, but not too desperate for Jesus to heal a man of leprosy. The Bible verse says in verse number 12, Behold a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face. He sees Jesus. In the book of Matthew, we see the same story written out of the book of Matthew. And the Bible says that he came to Jesus. I love the idea that he came to Jesus. Do you know what this man did? When he needed help, he came to Jesus. Folks, let me remind you of something. If you find yourself in a place, in a time, in a moment where you need help, if you'll come to Jesus, you'll come to the right place. If you'll come to Christ, you'll come to the right spot. I'll have you know something. The devil is consistently and constantly working, trying to keep people from finding the help and hope and healing that we find in Jesus Christ. The devil will discourage you from going to Jesus. The devil will tell you that those church people look down their nose at you. Let me just tell you something. When you sit in a church like ours, you sit surrounded by a bunch of sinners saved by grace. A bunch of folks who needed Jesus and found him. You find yourself not in a bunch of, around a bunch of people who think they're better than the folks on the outside. We're just folks who found healing in the Savior. And we love you just exactly the way you are. And this leper did something that lepers weren't accustomed to doing. And you know, the devil put in your mind, you've got sin in your life and you're dirty. And you, you've got sin in your life and you, you've got... Uh, Things that you're ashamed of and you, you, you sense and know that you're unclean. The devil put things in your mind. Those, those Christian people won't have anything to do with you. And then God will tell you something like this. God don't even love you. There, nothing could be further from the truth. And this leper did something that all of us who are suffering from sin and decay and leprosy, he came to Jesus Boy, you come to Jesus, you'll find out that he's what you needed all along. You come to Jesus, he'll help you. But let me remind you of something. And the devil will sell you a lie. The devil will tell you that Jesus don't love you. The devil will tell you that you're in this situation because God hates you. The devil will tell you that uh, Christian people don't care about you. The devil will tell you that the Bible doesn't apply to you. The devil will tell you that God doesn't, isn't really real. The devil will tell you anything he can tell you to keep you from coming to Jesus, the very place that you can get the help that you need. But on this day, the leper came to Jesus, and I'm so glad that he did. And let me tell you something, he's glad he did too. The leper came to Jesus. Not only did he come to Jesus, but the scripture says in verse 12, the Bible says that this man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him. He fell on his face and he said, Lord, he besought him. He asked of him, help me. He fell on his face. You know what? It's necessary if we're going to find the healing that Jesus provides for lepers like us. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come to the place where we're willing to humble ourselves before the Lord. This guy got to the place where he knew that he needed Jesus. He got to the place where he knew that he couldn't heal himself. He came to the place where he knew that he was too far gone. And other things he'd tried was not sufficient. And so when he came to Jesus, not only did he come to Jesus, but he bows before Jesus, he humbles himself, and he says, look, I need help. Do you know where the most wonderful place to be is spiritually? Not the place where I've memorized all the Bible. I pray eloquent prayers. I dress up for church. That's not the best place to be spiritually. The best place to be spiritually is when you come and you know that you need Jesus. When you come and you humble yourself and bow at his feet. When you come you say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you want, you can have. The place you need to get to is the place where you know you need God. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a foolish person who decides in their heart that they don't need God. Sometimes... The devil gets in our minds and the devil confuses us and gets us to the place where there is no God, where we don't need God. And we think, let me, think, let me remind you, you think erroneously. This leper came to Jesus and fell on his face. You need to humble yourself and let Jesus heal you. Let Jesus help you. I'll have you know he can. The leper fell on his face. Look what else he says in this verse, verse number 12. Who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, 
If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I, I love that little phrase. If thou wilt, thou canst. What's that mean? He says, the labor says, Lord, if you will, if you want to, you can make me clean. If you want to, you can make me clean. Now, this leper is showing some faith. He begins to understand that Jesus indeed does have the power to meet his need. Maybe you're here today and you doubt whether Jesus could meet your needs. You say, Jesus might have met your needs, preacher, but Jesus can't meet this one. You don't have any idea how far gone I am. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the thought process. Let me just tell you something. Jesus can meet your need. This leper, he said, Lord, if you want to, you can help me. And I'm going to tell you something. You get to the place where you say, I know that God can help me. You turn to God, you're going to find out that he is sufficient. He's just and right and able. He says, if you will... You can. And here's what he says in verse number 12, the leper. He says, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Well, I love that phrase. What's the leper want? The leper says, I want to be clean. That word clean is very important. He says, I want to be clean. I want to be clean of this leprosy. I don't want to smell like this anymore. I don't want to have to declare myself unclean as I come into public. I want to be clean. I want to be cleaned up. Do you know something that God uses in our hearts, all of us? God uses the sense of uncleanness to drive us to himself. Now, I'll give you some examples. God uses the sense of uncleanness to drive us to himself. How many of you had the sense that you were physically unclean you know what that feels like right I'll tell you a fun story Hudson and Ian and I and Ruth we had uh, we were living in North Carolina this is many years ago now and uh, we're living in North Carolina and we come home to visit a family here in Chilhowie and uh, it just so happened that my uncle Andy had uh, a load of cattle that needed to be worked and the cattle had been uh, dropped off at his high, at his uh, barn and they'd spent the night in his holding pen which isn't covered and it had rained so a, a load of cattle were in a pen where it had rained all night and they needed to be worked and so I thought man this is fun this would be a good opportunity to get my boys they were just little at the time get my boys a, an opportunity opportunity and exposed to that and I said let's do it but we weren't dressed appropriately uh, the boys had on shorts and t-shirts and it was summertime and they had on sandals like those uh, uh, choco sandals and uh, it was a uh, it was not appropriate farm attire but who cares let's go work some cattle and so we went and uh, we went to the barn and sure enough it was a soupy sloppy mess and uh, I sent the boys out after the cattle, and, uh, and they didn't mind. They tromped right through the mud. And you can imagine after we worked a whole load of cattle, and they'd been, the, the, they'd been bringing them in. And you can just imagine how nasty they were. I mean, head to toe, uh, shorts, T-shirts, chacos, everything covered in manure. And uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty nasty. So we took a water hose. We had to drive back to Asheville that night. We took a water hose and washed them down and, and the best we could and got in the car and went home. When we got home, they wanted to play. They wanted to play out in the yard. And I said, no problem. That's fine. And uh, they're playing. And so I went in the house, got cleaned up. And it was a Saturday night, so I was getting ready to preach. I was laying across the end of the bed. And uh, in comes Hudson. And uh, Hudson says, Dad, I think I broke my arm. And uh, I sat up on the bed and rolled around and looked at him. And sure enough, uh, my doctor vision, actually, no doctor at all. You didn't have to be a doctor to see that. His arm, it was straight. Now it's crooked. And I was like, yep, you did break your arm. And I looked at him. I'll never forget. I sat up and I looked at him. I said, buddy. And he was in some pain. I said, buddy, you're going to hate me. I said, he said, do what? I said, yeah, you're going to hate me. I said, we can't take you to the hospital until we get some of this manure off of you. And so... We had to get him clean. I looked at it. I was like, we had to get him clean. We washed him down and sent him to the, uh, to the hospital. If you wondered how he broke his arm, I'll tell you. He would decided he could jump off the top of the treehouse onto the trampoline, and he broke his arm. So at any rate, uh, we cleaned him up and took him to the hospital, and that's the end of the story. Uh, but there was an urgent need to clean him. As a matter of fact, it's kind of fun because the doctor told me, they said, it's a good thing you cleaned him because if you have to, uh, if you treat those wounds with all that manure, you've got to do it a little bit different because it's very dangerous for uh, infection, that type of stuff. But anyway, uh, he needed to be clean. 
And I saw him. I was like, he has to be clean. And that sense that God gives us that we need to be clean and cleaned up is something that God uses. There's a sense that God gives us in our hearts that makes us feel dirty. I'll tell you, if you sin as a Christian, God will make you feel dirty. He'll, he'll give you that sense that what you just did is filthy and wrong. And if you are uh, lost, you've never been saved, and, and God's wanting to get your attention, he's wanting to save your soul, he'll use that sense that you have that feels dirty to bring you to a place where you want to get clean. And, and God has the power to make you feel so dirty that you'll turn to him. And on this day, this leper, he felt dirty. He said his interest and his burden was that Jesus would clean him, cleanse me. I've told you so many times, but when the Lord was dealing with me about being saved, I was just a child, a group of children sang a song, a Bible verse song on WHCB radio. And the kids sang this little verse. It said, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And you know what God did in my heart? I heard that verse and I felt so dirty. And it wasn't God being mean to me. It was God showing me that, Cody, you are a sinner. And your sin is against me. Your sin has a penalty. And your sin is something that I can take care of. This leper said, I want to be clean. If you're here and you feel that sense that I'm dirty, I need to be clean. Don't ignore it. Don't turn it away. If you've been saved, you repent of the sin that's in your life and God will forgive you. But if you're lost and you feel that sense of filth and dirty, you say, I I'm so dirty, I'm so unclean. Let me tell you something. That's the Holy Spirit of God telling you, hey, listen, I love you and I need to clean you. This leper, he said, Lord, make me clean. Lord, make me clean. Make me clean. Number one, the leper. Number two, the Lord. What does the Lord do? How do you think... The Lord Jesus. Now, the Lord Jesus is the most famous man that's ever breathed air. He's the most famous person that's ever lived. How do you think Jesus responds to a dirty, rotten, filthy leper? The lepers already broke the law by coming too close and falling at Jesus' feet. How does Jesus respond to dirty people? I'll show you. The Bible says in verse number 13, he put forth his hand and touched him. I love that. What did Jesus do to the leper? Jesus, when the leper bowed at his feet, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Now, this is something I want you to think about for a minute. I wonder. This man was full of leprosy. Leprosy had been a part of his life for a length of time now. And I wonder how long had it been since this man had felt the loving touch of someone else. Jesus reaches down and touches him. He put forth his hand and touched him. And the Bible says this, saying, I will be thou clean. You remember what the leper said? He said, if thou wilt, if you want to, if you will, you can heal me. And Jesus says, I will be thou clean. I want to clean you. The Lord was compassionate. He was active. He was personally involved and the Lord was willing to help this person. He put forth his hand. He touched him. He says, I will, I want to make you clean. I think this is such a beautiful passage of Scripture. Do you know that Jesus does want to make you clean? Let me talk to you for just a moment. Does God heal all lepers? No. No. When we pray for folks that have cancer, and we do often, does God heal everybody of cancer that we pray for? The answer is no. And I don't understand why God heals some people of cancer. I don't understand why some people's children survive cancer and others' children don't. I don't understand it. When we pray, and we should, does God always heal the physical infirmities? The answer is no. 
Can he? Yes. Does he sometimes? Yes. Often? Yes. I think he heals in ways we never even imagined, things we don't even know about. God's working and intervening and working on our behalf, and we should praise him. But let me tell you something that God does will. He wants any person who is leprous in sin, any person whose heart is cold towards him, any person who's lost in need of a Savior, any person who's sin sick, God always heals the folks who call on them, heals them of their sin. Forgives them of their sin. Gives them everlasting life. He is willing to clean you. He said it like this. One of my favorite verses. I quote it all the time. I know that. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you something. Jesus is willing to heal you. Jesus is willing to touch you when no one else will. Jesus is willing to give you a chance when no one else will. Jesus is willing to clean you of your sin. Jesus loves you. The Lord healed this leper on this particular day. And if you'll come to him humbly, seeking him, giving him your life, giving him your sin, he'll clean you right up. The Lord will do that. Something else I see as I consider the Lord. You know we're supposed to be like Jesus. How many of you are trying to be like Jesus and failing every day? Here I am. (laughs) But we're supposed to try. Let me remind you of how Jesus dealt with somebody who the world said was wicked and unclean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched them and was willing to help them. If you're one of these folks who look down your self-righteous nose at people who don't look like you, people who've messed up their lives, people who've done horrible things, let me remind you of something. Only by God's grace are you where you are. And God's people are to be loving people, touching, helping, pointing people to Jesus. Does that mean we accept everybody's sin? No. We don't accept sin. Sin's wrong. But that means we love people. We point them to Jesus who is willing to forgive, who is willing to help, who is willing to change their lives for his glory. And we need to have the kind of people of the spirit of Jesus. You see, the Lord healed the leper. The leper, the Lord, and finally number three, the priest. The priest. We'll bring this message to Conclusion, it's kind of fascinating what Jesus says next. So the Bible says that Jesus healed the leper. Immediately, in verse number 13, the leprosy departed from him. In verse 14, the Bible says this, And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. What does is, what is Jesus say? It's kind of fascinating. He says, he charged him to tell no man. I don't exactly understand why on a few occasions Jesus tells folks he healed, don't tell anybody. Uh, don't tell anybody. There's a, stories in the Bible where he says, don't tell anybody. They tell people anyway. And in this story, Jesus has a different purpose. He says, I don't tell anybody. Here's what I want you to do. He says, I want you to go straight to the priest And I want you to tell the priest that you've been healed, cleansed of leprosy. And I want you to tell the priest that you want him to do, according to the law, what priests do for people who've been healed of leprosy. Now, this is an interesting thing. In the Old Testament law, Moses had given uh, given specific details inspired by God as to how to restore somebody to the community and declare them clean after they've had leprosy. Let me just tell you something. Leprosy was not something that many people ever got over. But God in the law made a way to bring people back into fellowship and declare them clean after having leprosy. Now I can just imagine that this leper went to the priest on this particular day and said, Priest, Jesus of Nazareth has healed me of leprosy. And he told me to come see you You'd know what I needed to do in order to be declared clean from leprosy. And we'll read some of it here in just a moment in the book of Leviticus. Let me tell you something. It is a list of things that you do that's quite long. And I'm going to read some of them to you in just a minute. And I can imagine being the priest in this situation. Someone comes to me and says, I want you to do 
the cleansing for a leper. I mean, I bet the priest's like, oh, man, I have never done this. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to figure out how to do this, write down the order of service and figure out, boy, I don't, I don't know how to do that. It'd be like asking a, a, a brand-new preacher to do a wedding. That's nervous. That'd make you nervous. Uh, asking a brand-new young preacher to do a funeral, oh, that'd make you nervous. Uh, this guy came to the priest, and he said, he said, I want you to do what the Old Testament law says to be done in regards to cleansing a leper. Now, if you would, look with me in Leviticus. I want you to see it for just a moment. We won't be here much longer. But Leviticus chapter 14. In Leviticus chapter 14, you go in your Bibles, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the third book of the Bible. Moses wrote it. And the book of Leviticus is one of those books of the Bible where it's got lots of details. And if you're, you can be reading it and your eyes will start going crossed a little bit, uh, that's okay. It, it's rich with truth. Uh, and I'd encourage you to study it. But let's look at Leviticus chapter 14. And I want you to hear what Jesus wanted this leper to have the priest help him do. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 14 verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper. In the day of his cleansing he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel overrunning with water. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and, the, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. He shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off his hair and wash himself in water that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows. Even all his hair he shall shave off. And he shall wash his clothes also. He shall wash his flesh in water and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish. And one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish. And three tenths deals of fine flour for a meat offering. Mingled with oil and one log of oil. And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean. And those things before the Lord. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall take one he lamb. And offer him for a trespass offering. And the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering. And the burnt offering in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering. And the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. Now, isn't that a fascinating picture? Let me explain to you a little bit what we just read. So... This leper goes to the priest, and the priest is like, man, I've not ever done that. Let me go find it, Leviticus chapter 14. And he begins to read and study. He begins to prepare. Because clearly, a leper has been healed, and the Old Testament law said there's a few things you got to do. you got to take two birds. You sacrifice one. Now, we don't do this today, but it's interesting. I hope it will help you. I'm going to give you a very basic class in this two birds one bird is sacrificed and his blood shed mingled with water the other bird is set free with the blood of the dead bird on its body now look it's kind of an ugly picture but it's a picture you see Jesus died for our sins but his blood was applied to us so that we can live and live forever What was Jesus doing? Jesus had sent a leper that was healed to the priest for a testimony. Jesus was sending a message to the priest. 
hey, look, I've done what Jesus does. A little bit later in the story, a lamb is slain. Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When Jesus died on the cross, his blood was shed and applied for us. He paid the price for our sin. Nobody else could do it. But for this leper, the lamb was slain and the blood was applied to interesting places like his ear tip and his toe. The blood was applied. The blood was applied to the leper. And Jesus' blood, when we trust Christ by faith as our Savior, is applied to us and he washes us clean with his blood. God the Father gave Moses the word to write. God the Son is the lamb that was slain. God the Holy Spirit is the oil that's poured on the clean person. And Jesus sends the leper to the priest. Why? He says it like this. He says, I want you to go down there for a testimony. For a testimony unto them. I want you to share what I've done. And when this man went to the priest, in the name of Jesus, Jesus showed what he had done. And what he had began to do. And what he's been doing now for thousands of years. His sacrifice is what cleanses us from our leprosy. The Lord healed the leper. If you're here today, you don't have to understand every detail of the Old Testament law because I sure don't. But if you're here today and you say, man, I feel so dirty and unclean. If you're saved, you need to get right with God. But if you're here, you feel so dirty and unclean. And there's never been a time where you ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive your sins and be your Savior. Then today you need to humble yourself and ask God to forgive you of your sins. You see, Jesus is in the business of healing the leper. And we all need him. Jesus healed the leper on this particular day in our Bible story. And on this particular day today. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how bad it may be, I want you to know something. Jesus is sufficient. Amen. Jesus will meet your needs. Jesus will forgive your sin. Jesus will save your soul. But you must humble yourself and put your trust in him. Uh, the leper came to Jesus. And I wonder, will you do the same? Come to Christ. Give him your heart and life. You'll be glad you did. Let's pray.